Now that the panel is powered on, we're going to go through the onboard settings. Select the language, click Next. Your Ethernet settings, Next. Select your time zone, Next. Keep it on normal mode, Next. You'll see that your apps will display and your panel is now ready for use. All right, let's connect our panel to our network. If I'm Ethernet, I need to plug in on the bottom right side corner. But to access Wi-Fi, there's actually two ways I can get there. You'll notice that there's a Wi-Fi logo here on the front menu that I can touch. Or I can touch this down arrow to expand the viewboard menu, and I can choose Settings. From the list, choose Wi-Fi. Make sure the status is selected to On, and then choose your Wi-Fi network from the list and enter the password. Now that we're connected, I get a check mark next to the network that I'm connected to. I can press the home button on the front of the panel. Now that I'm connected to the network, I want to make sure that my time and date are correct as well. So again, two ways to change this. One is you can go into your settings, or you can just touch the clock to access the date and time menu. From here, just do a quick deselect and select of automatic date and time to get the updated network time. If things aren't lining up, just make sure your time zone is correct as well. And any other changes you want to make, such as the date format, you can do here. When you're finished, press the home button to return to the home screen. The other setting that we want to change is what's called eco mode. So the panel is automatically set to shut down after five minutes to save power. So touch the down arrow and choose settings from the menu. From here, we're going to want to go to what's called input sources. Here, one of the options is called source. Select that. And then you're going to see an energy saving option. Again, it's set to five minutes default. So touch the down arrow. And then from the list, choose what you want your auto shutoff time to be then press the home button to return to the home screen. So this section here is where your apps live. If I want to see all my different apps, I touch the down arrow. Some of these are self-explanatory, like the browser, which lets us browse the web. Vcast receiver is how you can wirelessly share your screen to the board with devices that are on the same network. My view board is a digital whiteboarding software. Next, I'm just going to make sure that my panel is up to date. So again, I'm going to touch the down arrow and then go down to settings. I'm going to choose the option called system, and then I'm going to do a system update. We're going to do check now. Notice that it's set to automatic updates, but I can also manually check. You'll see here that it has an update, so it's going to go ahead and download and install that. Now that our update is finished, let's go ahead and choose Reboot. You're going to get a confirmation because this could take a few minutes. So while the system update is installing, it's really important to remember to not unplug the panel. We don't want to lose power and potentially mess this install up. So now that we have all the settings configured like the Wi-Fi and Eco mode, we can actually clone those to a USB stick and then install those settings on other boards so we don't have to repeat the same process over and over again. So to start, we're going to plug our USB into the front of the panel. You're going to get a notification to open folders. We're just going to touch cancel for now. And we're going to touch this down arrow in our menu to get back to our settings. Choose settings and then choose system from the list. From there, we're going to choose the clone to USB option. It will let us choose what we want to copy. Let's do OSD and settings for now. And then we can give a name for the image. Then choose copy to USB 1, which is connected to the panel. When you're finished, click OK, and the backup will be created. Now that we have all of our settings saved on our USB drive, we can go to another panel that hasn't been set up yet, plug it into the front, and we're going to choose to open the folders. In here, we'll see the settings file that we created. To run this, all we have to do is double tap it and then choose OK. 
We'll get a notification when the settings have been restored successfully, at which point I can unplug the USB drive and then go to the next panel. Note that it's important that the panel does need to be the same model number in order for you to do this. To access all of the apps on your viewboard, you'll see a little menu here with some pre-installed programs. To access more apps, touch the arrow that points down and the menu will expand. Here you'll see lots of different apps installed, including My Viewboard Display. My Viewboard Display allows guests to cast via the web to the panel. You'll also notice that there's a program called VSweeper, which allows you to clean the panel every once in a while and kind of refresh the apps, as well as the settings and folders. Some of these programs, like My Viewboard Display, the first time you run them will ask for an update. So go ahead and update those. If I wanna add some of these apps to my home screen, I can rearrange them. All I need to do is touch and drag, like my viewboard display, and you'll notice that I can place it over here on my home screen for quicker access. Also, if I wanna change some of the settings on the board, I can, such as the part where it shows viewboard. If I just do a long press like I did there, you'll notice that I can change the title and the subtitle to whatever I want it to say. I can also change the wallpaper by choosing settings from the menu, choosing display, and then choosing wallpaper. When you have a new wallpaper, choose set as wallpaper, and then it will change those settings for you. Remember, press the home button to return to your home screen. My Viewboard Manager is a program that we can install on the panel, giving you remote control of it. You can do things like send notifications and alerts or install apps from your computer directly. But we need to install this first and there's a couple ways you can do it. One, we can go to the web here on the panel and download the file or we can install the file on a USB drive and then plug the USB drive into the front. I'm gonna show you how to do it from the web. We're gonna open the browser and then we're gonna go to a website called wiki.myviewboard.com. Once you get to the page, scroll down towards the bottom. There's gonna be a section called How To. Keep going down a little further, and then on the right, you'll see My Viewboard Manager. Go ahead and click the My Viewboard Manager link, and then scroll down to the Downloading the App section. Click the link that says My Viewboard Manager Download Link. This will start the download and install it onto the panel. Now, in order for us to launch this file, we actually have to change the security settings of the panel to allow for third-party apps. So I'm gonna to touch the down arrow, and I'm gonna scroll down to where it says Settings. From here, I'm gonna choose System, and then I'm gonna to go to Security, and you'll notice that there's a checkbox for Allow Installation of Apps from Unknown Sources. I need to touch this to enable it. I'll get a little notification giving me a warning that I'm enabling this feature. Go ahead and press confirm. Now I'm gonna go back to the home button, which takes me to my home screen, and this time I'm gonna choose folders. In the folders section, you wanna make sure that you go to downloads, and then inside downloads, you'll see device manager, the APK that I just downloaded. So I'm gonna double tap that to install it. The installer will launch, Choose the install button on the right and let the program finish. From here, you can either open it or touch done. We'll press the home button. And now we can see the DM agent is installed on the front of the panel.